Hey guys, Lady Liberty Stacker. It is Monday, November 12, 2018, and I'm coming back at you with another video, and this time it's on cast iron seasoning and what fats do I use for seasoning to get your skillets to perform, look, and do the best over time. And if you're new to my channel, I've been collecting vintage cast iron since July of 2017. And I've actually been buying cast iron, the new lodge preseason stuff, since the fall of 2016 when I discovered that it's probably the type of cast iron that will last for a lifetime, for a lifetime or many lifetimes if it's taken care of properly. So without further ado, what you're actually looking at here is a part of my cast iron collection and all my skillets. I've probably seasoned and re-stripped and restored in the ballpark of 30 to 40 skillets. I've given some away as gifts. I have sold some and the majority of them I have kept because I enjoy cooking with cast iron. I think food tastes so much better. Uh, case in point with my barbecued topped meatloaf, turkey, actually it's turkey meatloaf. It is the most delicious recipe you're ever going to try. I recommend that you check that video out. But I don't want to get off topic here. But these skillets have been in the process of being used, but since I stripped them last year and probably up to six months ago, you can see that some of them are browner than others. Some of them are blacker than, than others. And it's because the more you use them, the blacker and shinier they get. So some ways people say to season them is just to simply use them, which is the, a good way to look at it. So anyway, I will show you my collection in just a minute and how it's held up over time. But what you're looking at here are some of my favorite oils that I use to season with. And I also want to talk about, before I talk about these, I want to talk about what I don't like to season with. Here is olive oil. And olive oil, I don't think, is a great seasoning because it has a low smoke point and it, it's not as stable of a permanent seasoning base for your skillets because of this. And also the fact that if you don't use your skillets a lot, uh, there's no way I could use all of these skillets every day. So if you don't and you season with this or do your mini seasoning maintenance uh, cleanings with this, your skillets could become sticky or rancid because this does go rancid after a period of time. So that's one reason why I don't like olive oil. Another oil that, that I don't like to season with is flaxseed oil. Flaxseed oil is the counterpart of linseed oil, which is used in oil paints. And linseed oil has been known to break down over time. And there's no heating involved with oil paints. But when you're heating and repeatedly using a cast iron skillet with utensils and everything, that flaxseed oil will break down and flake off and it's going to go in your food. I did try flaxseed oil, so I know what I'm talking about. And it's also on many cast iron forums that flaxseed oil is not recommended, not a preferred way to season your cast iron because it will flake off over time. And, and they recommend, if you use flaxseed, that you use six coatings at least to coat uh, with a very thin layer. Now, the very thin layer is, is important with any kind of oil that you use to season cast iron with. But you shouldn't have to do six layers at first. So, flaxseed oil and olive oil, I do not recommend. You can cook with olive oil. I wouldn't even recommend cooking with flaxseed oil. It's just not the best thing for you, based on a lot of research. Uh, you can vet whatever I'm saying and look it up for yourself, but that's what I've been able to find. Now, moving on to what I actually do like, you can use ghee, which is basically a clarified butter with all the lactose removed. And if you are lactose intolerant, this is ideal. If you want, instead of butter, you can actually use this. It's more expensive. You don't need quite as much because it's condensed without all the, the extra water component in it. 
but I get this at Walmart. It's about nine to ten dollars. It is 12 flow ounces. And if you're a member of Costco, they have their brand of ghee, and you can actually get it at Costco probably about two pounds, a big jar, kind of like a big mayo jar. And it's $19 and some odd cents. The expiration date on that was in 2019. The expiration date on this is 2020. So, you know, who knows when it actually expires, but that's why you, you know, the price is what it is. I like Crisco All Vegetable Shortening. The smoke point on that, actually on both of these, is quite high. I know for a fact Crisco All Vegetable Shortening is 490 degrees smoke point. But anything over 350 degrees for at least an hour in the oven will be enough to carbonize this fat and make a nice thin bond layer with your skillet. I use Crisco. I do three to four layers of initial seasoning anytime I rest uh, strip and restore a skillet. So Crisco is excellent. Another uh, two things I don't have here to show you, but I will say is Pam Cooking Spray is excellent. Pam Cooking Spray is good for items like this with a lot of nooks and crannies. This was next to impossible to do. Uh, I would never get another one of these again, but it, it was just really hard to do. And you want to make sure that the seasoning you do use is going to hold up so you don't have to redo this one too often. Corn stick pans are kind of the same thing. That's why they recommend Pam or you could do, use this. It's a high smoke point. I recommend this more or less with cooking, stir frying meats, doing stir fry, vegetable stir fries because the smoke point on this is 500 degrees Fahrenheit, but if you're going to do that, gradually heat up your skillet, starting at low to medium, and then going from there so it's safe on your cooktop, especially if you have a glass cooktop like I do. But pan cooking spray is good. It does have canola oil in it, and canola oil itself is also recommended because of the stability it has, and it also has the ability to bond. It has a stable and carbonized surface with your cast iron when you season with it. I don't season with it, but it's recommended, so some of you may do that. And then of course you have your ghee, which is more expensive, but you could season with that. So that's kind of what I do when I um, season a skillet for the first time. I use Crisco, and then I sometimes I use cooking spray when I'm mini seasoning after I've cleaned it with warm to hot water after I've used it and scraped off the extra food particles. So, now the other reason why you want to use Crisco, if you have a lot of skillets like I do, is they will hold up very well when you haven't used them for a long, long time. So, let's go through and I'll show you what I have and how it's held up. This one here is a number eight. It is a made in the USA. Just picked this up in June. I stripped it and redid it. This is a Wagner Ware, unmarked. And it has a little bit of a warp to it, or, you know, a spin to it. It's actually fairly flat, but it does spin a little bit, but it cooks just fine. Uh, that, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with. I may sell it. I just only have so much room for skillets. This is one of the first ones that I bought, covered in rust. This is a... The back looks like a Birmingham Stove and Range BSNR. The handle looks like a Wagner Ware. And the raised number on the handle looks like a lodge, an old lodge. But a lot of people have called this a mystery southern skillet. But it's done very, very well for me. And it started out, it was one of the first ones I did. Go back and see the video in July 2017. This thing is a performer today. It's done very, very well. And you can see... The difference between this one and the brown Birmingham Stove and Range that I just picked up in June. I was going to sell this, but it's got some pitting in here that some collectors may not like, so I'm keeping it. I've used it for fried eggs, scrambled eggs, omelets. I even did pancakes in this just fine. The more layers of seasoning and the more times you use it to cook, the seasoning will fill in. So this is becoming very smooth. And it's also a little bit lighter than the Modern Lodge, even though it is kind of heavy. But that's what it looks like on the back. It's a Birmingham Stove and Range, unmarked, number 10. Very, very heavy. <laughs> 
And um, anyway, so that's what that is. Then I've got three, number threes. They are six and a half inch skillet. This is one of the first ones I did. And I just used it the other day to make a breakfast sandwich. It is dry. It is... Actually, if you look here, very dry. It's not sticky at all. Then you have a Wagner Ware, number three. And you have a large logo Griswold, which is the most collectible of the three. And I did these last year. They're nice and dry. Then you have a number eight Griswold, flat bottom. This I sold one with the heat ring. I kept this. This is great for scrambled eggs. I've made mac and cheese in this. I made a... Uh, chocolate dessert in this and that's good I'll put that over here and then this one is a chicken fryer I just don't have a lid for it but I could use my Dutch oven lid that's a number eight Dutch oven Birmingham stove and range and uh, this is a nice fryer I just haven't had a chance to use it just yet and of course you have your number five Wagner ware you can see in these older skillets you can see how they used to tool these Look at all the milling there. And this one has a little bit of a spin, but it's fairly flat and has even cooking. It does a nice job. Then you have the Griswold. This is the one I left on the stove top, but it should uh, fill in. And that should, I could restrip it and start all over again, but it, over time that will all blacken even more as I use it. Then my number six Wagner very dry. Don't use it too often, but I use it for scrambled eggs and such for breakfast. And then I have a number seven, which I've shown making omelets in it. Again, this is done very well. It has some stubborn seasoning on the back, which I really had a hard time getting off. Electrolysis would probably remove it a little bit better, faster, but vinegar will also get it off too. But that's as good as I was... That was as good as I was going to get for me. And then we have, I'll go and put these back over here. I'll save that one for last. Then we have the Lodges. This is a pancake griddle. It works just great. It's modern stuff, but I sanded it. You can see how smooth it is for a modern lodge. I took a four inch Avanti Pro Disc from Home Depot and put it to my electric drill and I wire wired it as much as possible and the back is you can tell it's getting nice and dark so I'm gonna put that down somewhere and then we have a number 10 I think this is number 10 lodge again they're a little heavier this is a modern lodge nothing collectible about it but it's great for scrambled eggs or just you know I just feel like using it. Maybe the other one. I'm giving it a rest. But this one's fine. And I got that. I didn't know exactly what it was when I first got it. And then here is the first skillet. Oop, not this one. This one is a chrome-plated Wagner Ware number 9 from Sydney, Ohio. And this one is a great one to do chicken. That chicken vegetable recipe I showed you guys I did in there. It does have a little bit of a spin to it, but you can put it in the oven. You can take it from stovetop to oven, and it, that's a great cooker for that. And, of course, the original one that I got was a Lodge, number 10. I use this for my mac and cheese recipe. It's heavy. It goes from the stovetop to the oven, and I need this for the oven assist. Um, these are extremely heavy, but they're okay. I just like the uh, older stuff better because you can pick it up a lot easier. But again, I did sand this wire. Actually, I wire wheeled it with an Avanti 4-inch strip disc I got from Home Depot. And that would be a lot louder if it were a, <laughs> the way it came. And then finally here, I've got my Dutch oven. I've used it once. I'm going to make a, a soup like Carabas has. I think I might do it for Thanksgiving, I'm not sure, but this is an unmarked BSNR. This is a great Dutch oven, and I was—I actually picked it up to sell it, but I'm not going to sell it. It's a number eight, you can see here from the lid. And I can probably use this lid in some of my other skillets, but at any rate, that's what I have. 
And you can see, oh, and the final one, I've never used this. I seasoned it last year, probably gave it four layers of Crisco. It is shiny. It's dry. It's just as good as I seasoned it last year, and it's a collectible. I'm almost afraid to use it. It's a number 10 Griswold Large Logo Slant Griswold Skillet. This is extremely collectible. They run from 150 to 200, 250, depending on, you know, um, condition, number of listings on eBay. These things are quite expensive, and it's not perfect, but it's in darn good shape. I've never used it. It's still a little bit brown, but you can see how shiny, and that's what Crisco will do if you do it correctly. So anyways, guys, um, that's pretty much it for my uh, video today. I just wanted to show you how well these skillets have held up over the last year to year and four months. And using the right seasoning techniques, using the right oils. My favorite is Crisco. And like I said, canola is good. Pam cooking spray is excellent, especially for the small nooks and crannies. And because it has canola oil in it. And one more thing I want to show you guys. I just got this the other day. I've been trying to find grips. You're going to need handle grips. These things get hot. I had these. But if you're not careful, they can burn. And you can see this one is very, very worn. It's just basically like a hot pad. A cotton hot pad. Then I got these silicone ones. I don't like these at all. They don't seem to grasp the handle. They slide around. The handle slides around in these. They're silicone, so they can get very hot, but I don't like them at all. So I found these by Kitchen Grips. These are wonderful because all you have to do is pinch them open like so and just slide it. Oops. There you go. Slide it right on the handle and it seems to grab the handle real well. And it's got a silicone part underneath so it won't burn and it's very heat resistant. So just a little uh, tip there. Anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, um, leave it below. Uh, please see the other videos on seasoning and maintenance. I'm not going to show you here. You can watch the other videos for that. They're linked below in the description or at the end of the video. And leave me a thumb up if you like this video and you want to see more like this. Anyway, guys, I appreciate you watching and go make it a great day.